The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Hello and welcome to the first show of Connecting to Spirit with Stacy on WBGR Network. Um, I'm going to be here every Tuesday with you at 1030 in the morning. And things that we are going to talk about are going to be talking about grief. We're going to be talking about death. We're going to be talking about things like life after life different meditations. Um, we've got special subjects that we'll talk about whether it has to do with signs or if there's something in particular that you would like me to speak about please feel free to comment and let me know and we'll definitely talk about those things. And when we do talk it's funny a lot of the things that that are going to be in part of our conversation are things that people just normally don't want to talk about they're the things that make you uncomfortable and that's where we're going to be we're going to be kind of in an uncomfort level zone um, basically because we all deal with death in some form so if we have a little bit of an eye-opening or a walk into what that is sometimes that helps the grief process so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Stacy Needenthal. Um, I have been happily married to my husband for 25 years. I have three children that have given me several grandchildren and we live in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I own a sister or I own a shop with my sister, um, Hip Gypsy Emporium, that is also in Chambersburg. Again, this is my first show, so if I get a little tongue tied please just forgive me and we'll get better with time um, so what happened I thought um, there were several things that I wanted to talk about but I thought with the first show I should talk about how all of this happened so several years ago I started having panic attacks and they were very disabling panic attacks I couldn't go out I couldn't leave the house and and or it was just I was kind of in a in a quandary there of what to do making decisions I couldn't do that I had to have my husband do that so as I was going through these panic attacks and feeling like my throat was closing up and having dry heaves and walking around the house at all hours I ended up making an appointment with my doctor um, I don't know if I was suicidal but I know that I understood suicide and that kind of scared me. So I made an appointment with my doctor. Um, didn't know if I was schizophrenic. I didn't know if um, I had onset dementia, Alzheimer's, what was going on. All I knew was I never really felt like I fit in where I was at and I always felt like I needed to go somewhere else. It was that fight or flight that was always in me. My husband came to several of my doctor's appointments with me so that he could understand what was going on. Um, I did go to a counselor. I talked about traumas that I had been through and those traumas had been years ago. So I was kind of surprised that they were resurfacing, but you know, PTSD, depression, things like that, you know, they're that, that um, little snake that creeps up when you don't expect it. So I was kind of on board with going to a counselor and doing the meds. And although they helped, they didn't take this away. So this was before my mom had passed. So when my mom got sick, and she got sick in April, um, and she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. So she passed in June and with her passing it made me want to go and see a medium just to see if I could connect with my mother 
just to have that validation that even though she wasn't physically here with me on earth, she was still around me. And I went to see this medium at my friend's house, um, Denise, who now is my road manager, as my husband calls her. Um, and she had a, a, a medium there, and it was a small, intimate group. I think there were five people there. And the medium said things to me that she wouldn't have known. Like she said about this round item that I carried around that was my mother's. Well, my mother always carried this um, 50 cent piece in her wallet that my father had given her when they first started going out. And when she passed, that was one of the items that I desperately wanted and I carried it with me all the time. So she knew about that. She knew about the date that was on the half dollar. And just the things that she said to me gave me such peace to know that mom was still around me. And the very first thing that the woman said to me was, you are my sunshine. And I'll explain about you are my sunshine in a, in a few minutes when I, when I talk a little bit more. So after we had this reading, um, the medium came up and spoke to myself and my daughter and she said to me you know you could do exactly what I'm doing and I looked at her like she had four eyes and she said spirit has a very big job for you to do and she started describing my panic attacks she started telling me that she knew that I couldn't be in a room with ticking clocks because when there was a ticking clock in my room it would feel like the clock was making the world go smaller and smaller. So all the ticking clocks in my house had to go away. She described how it felt like my tongue was swelling. And she looked at me very matter of fact and said to me, look, you either need to open up to spirit or you need to shut this down. Because if you continue at the pace that you're going right now, like they're gonna drive you crazy. I would literally be walking and I felt like something was like walking by me or you know I'd be driving and I felt like someone came by me so after I had the reading I came home and I talked to my husband about it um, because being raised in the church speaking to the dead basically was wrong or so I thought and uh, my husband was very supportive and I started praying and I started having conversations with God and I basically said to God, look, if this is what you want me to do, you've got to give me so many signs that it's obvious. Like the signs for dummies hit me on the head. That's what I need. And as I'm praying this, this scripture kept coming back to me. And the scripture was greater things you will do through me than I have done myself. And I thought, what? Okay. So he started showing me signs and I started having kind of like mm, flashbacks of different things. And one of the flashbacks that I had were the aha moments. It was almost like a God wink that he was saying, I've been showing you signs all along. You're just not paying attention. So one of the flashbacks that I had, um, we were in the hospital room with my mom and the pastor was there. And it was myself, my sister, my niece, and my father. And we were all praying around my mother. And after we were finished praying, my mom had made a comment to my sister that, that Lori had later said to me, Mom asked me who that other person was that was in the circle. And I guess she must have described a man in kind of plain clothing that was kind of biblical. And both my sister, and I, it gives me chills just thinking about it right now. Both my sister and I were like, oh my gosh, Jesus was there. We knew it was getting close to the end, but there was a sign that I had overlooked. I was just looking at it that God was there getting ready to take my mom. So that was one of the signs that, that, they, that they showed me. Another sign that I received, again, um, when I was at the hospital, uh, my father was in the room with my mom having some alone time with her and I'm sitting out in the lobby and I had you know turned my chair around and I'm looking out the window and of course I'm crying and this man comes up and he puts his his hand on my shoulder and asks me if I'm okay and I was like no sir I'm not and he said is there anything that I can do for you so I basically said to him you know can you heal my mother? Um, 
And he goes, I could pray for her. Would you like me to pray for her? And of course, absolutely. I will take all the prayers that I can get for my mom. So after that, my sister came walking into the waiting room. And I don't know if I forgot that the man was in the room. I don't know. But all of a sudden, he was not there. And my sister and I were speaking. And we were walking to her to mom's room. Um, and when we went in, we kind of like changed places where my father came with me and my sister sat down and talked to my mom. And when he and I walked out of my mother's room, there's this man standing in front of her room with his hands up in the air. Now, I don't know if he followed me there. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, the man just kind of disappeared in my mind because I was focused on, on Lori being there and getting her to mom's room. But I remember like walking down the hallway and kind of looking over my shoulder thinking, okay, he said he was going to pray for her, but like he was right in front of her room. So that was another sign that God showed to me. And while uh, my father and I are walking down the hallway, there was an elevator that opened and a woman walked out who was familiar to me. You know, I was far enough away that I couldn't like make out who she was, but her face, her body, it was just like very familiar to me. And I realized it was my friend Deb who worked at the hospital for years. And I noticed when she walked out of the elevator, like she kind of like looked around and I called her name and kind of went running to her and hugged her and again, I was crying. And she kind of chuckled and she said, well, now I know why I took the wrong elevator. I was supposed to connect with you. So there was another sign. God was showing me all along that mom was going to be okay, that he was there with her, and that he was showing me I was connecting with the angels that were around her. So later that night, I'm talking to my mom. I, I spent the night with her. Um, we had hoped to bring her home that night, but didn't realize that we needed to have a hospital bed at home. So she had to spend another night in the hospital, and I stayed with her. And we didn't speak much. Um, she just kind of lay quietly in bed, and every once in a while she would wake up kind of startled, and I would grab her hand and let her know that I was there with her. But at one point, I kind of leaned in and I said to her, You know, Mom, when you cross over, like you're going to have to send me signs. I need to know that you're around me. And she kind of smiled and she said, tricks. And I, you know, I laughed to myself. My husband and I, if anybody, anybody who knows us, we love practical jokes. We've always played practical jokes on each other, on our kids. My poor kids were probably traumatized from some of the tricks that we played on them. But I thought, you know, oh my goodness, like spirit is going to do practical jokes like how do I how do I get that revenge back you know there was no doing that but I thought okay all right if you want to send me tricks and that'll let me know for sure that you are present you are with me I'm I'm, I'm aces with it so we brought my mother home and um, I was at home that night babysitting my grandchild and I got a phone call um, after 2 o'clock in the morning from my sister letting me know that my mother had passed. So, of course, I woke my husband up and left him know that he would need to take care of Dillinger. And I got in my car and I drove to my mom's house. And it was June and it was warm and the air was just, it just smelled so good, so fresh. And the drive from my home to my mother's home it's it's all country all back roads so I have the windows down and I'm talking to my mom of course crying you know as as we do and all of a sudden I got this huge waft of, of like a bouquet of flowers and my mom was an avid gardener like that's where she would be that's where she always wanted to be was in the garden so when I get this big scent of flowers and mind you I'm in there's there's fields all around me, so there's no flowers. You know, I, find, I looked up and I'm like, okay, mom, that's the perfect goodbye. You know, I love you. And almost as soon as I said that, all of a sudden, bam, I was hit in the face with this scent of cow pasture. 
and I chuckled to myself or I laughed to myself or whatever that, okay, there's the practical joke. You got me, Mom. You got me. And then the flower scent came back. So there was, there was a very distinct sign from her. So when I got to the home, got to her home, and I remember walking in the back door, I just kind of like dropped my pocketbook and my glasses. I walked over to her and I spoke to her and I sang, You Are My Sunshine to her. And that was something that my grandmother had sang to me when I was a kid. I sang to my kids, my kids sing to their kids. But when mom was in the hospital and she couldn't sleep, I would just kind of rub her arm and I would sing, You Are My Sunshine to her. So you see, when I went to that medium, the very first thing that this woman said to me was, you are my sunshine. And it just, it validated to me that there is life after life. And with my mom, and I know this whole um, first episode is, is kind of like in tribute to her, but my mom was in advertising. She sold radio sales. And I had told her, now you're going to have to leave me these huge signs so that I know that it's you, right? So all of a sudden, to me, there's this advertising campaign everywhere I went. There's pillows that say you are my sunshine. There's plaques that say you are my sunshine. I found a ring that says you are my sunshine. So all of a sudden, you are my sunshine is resurfacing. I went on Facebook and there was an elderly man singing to his wife who was in the hospital. Guess what he was singing? You are my sunshine. So in every step, every time I turned around, like I would see these and I knew that she was around and my father gave me this jewelry box um, and it was a little um, like musical jewelry box after she passed and you know how it plays music and it's usually um, in the garden or Amazing Grace well guess what song it played it played You Are My Sunshine Now I had been in gift sales for years I sold music boxes for years I never had You Are My Sunshine in a music box. So again, it was my mom intervening saying, I'm here. It's that little God wink that she was there. And again, God has given me so many signs that now that when I'm open, now I see these, that he was with me, guiding me the whole way. So back to how I got on my journey. <laughs> so my husband and I, we own the shop with my sister and brother-in-law, Hip Gypsy Emporium. And he and I do um, motorcycle swap meets and we go to my motorcycle shows and tattoo conventions. And one year, and it was right after my mom had passed, we went to one in Howard County. And we live in Chambersburg, so it's, you know, two hours away. And we go and we set up and there's a man there who is, has all these tables out and he's selling helmet stickers. And Jeff and I had talked several times about getting into selling helmet stickers, but you have to buy so many. Um, so this man was selling his booth. He was selling his business. So I talked to my husband about it. He walked over, talked to Barry about it, ended up buying the sticker business. And Barry had just said, the only thing is, you know, I, I need to get my tables back. I'll leave. You can run this booth. I just need to get my tables back. And we thought, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to drive two hours to get my tables back, to get his tables back. Well, come to find out, Barry lived like four miles away from us in Greencastle. Coincidence? Nah. Godwink. Yes. So Barry comes to our shop, and um, of course we have to give him the tour of the shop. And he looked at me and he said, um, I think you need to talk to my sister Sue in Colorado. And I was like, well, why do I need to talk to her? And he said, I don't know, I just really feel like you need to talk to her. So I gave him my phone number and said, well, she can call me. I, I don't call people I don't know. I, I just I just don't. I mean, I do now, but I didn't then. Um, so a couple days later, Sue called me and she said, my brother called me and was very adamant that I give you a call. And she said, I'm not sure why, um, but I feel like I need to call you. So we talked for a little while. Sorry, I'm trying to like look to see if you're messaging me anything <laughs> on my phone here. It's still new to me. Um, so she asked me what I did and I told her about the shop and she was just like, nope, 
that's not it. So I asked her what she did. And she told me that she did wellness alignments. And I thought, what is that? So she told me, you, she basically puts you like in a meditative state. She connects with your energy and your spirit. She finds old agreements that you've brought with you through past lives. And she helps you to break those agreements. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is why these things happened. This is my, this is my puzzle piece to my path. So Sue was coming in from Colorado the next week. And we sat down and she did a um, whole body wellness alignment with my husband and myself. And I'm not a very trusting person, so the whole time in, I'm in meditation, I'm like open my, you know, one eye to see what she's doing and, you know, skeptical in my head. But things that came up that I was able to go, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. It, there was an injury to my rib that I felt like it like popped and there was a pain and then it went away. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh, this, this, is, this is the person I'm supposed to connect to. So I asked Sue if she would mentor me. And in Sue's most delicate way that she knows, um, she went, oh no, that's not my modality. You need to talk to someone who channels spirit. I have a friend of mine who lives in Australia. Why don't you call her, get a reading, and see what you think. So I thought, okay. I went from Chambersburg to Howard County, Maryland, to Colorado, to Australia. Where are you taking me, Lord? <laughs> you know, where are we going here? But I listened, I followed, I did meditations, I read so many books about opening up to spirit. And when my third eye opened, that third eye was familiar to me. And it gave me, like everything would come back in flashbacks, like I would see movie pictures almost going into my head. And I remembered when I was young, and I would say maybe five, six, seven years old, I used to have these nightmares of this eye chasing me around. And it freaked me out, I gotta tell you, it, it, it freaked me out. I, I remember it freaking me out. I remember the bedroom that I was in, I remember waking up, like being afraid. And when my third eye opened, it was this eye, but all of a sudden, it felt like I was home. It felt like, this is what has been waiting for me. I wasn't ready when I was a child. And now that I have, was able to walk through some different things, spirit was tapping me on the shoulder, letting me know now is your time. So I had this reading with LaSalle and she was very spot on with so many things. Um, and I was very impressed. We did it through Facebook Messenger. Told me things about my mom told me things about my father, you know, just different things. And I said to her after the reading, would you mentor me? Because she had, in the reading, had said that I was very intuitive. And she agreed that she would mentor me. And I believe we set up like six classes. So the third class that we had, she said, you don't need me to mentor you. You just need to believe in yourself and believe that what spirit is telling you is right. And she said, sometimes when something comes natural to us and we take a class on it, it pulls us away from our natural abilities. I'll be here to guide you and help you through this, but there's no class that really needs to be taught. You just have to trust your instincts and listen. And I've always truly believed that everybody has some type of a gift. But I looked at those gifts as you're a musician you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're an artist, you're a speaker. That was, to me, was a gift. But talking to those that had passed um, kind of like freaked me out a little bit. You know, I saw the horror movies where, you know, the head spins around and they spit pea soup. And I gotta tell you, in all the readings I've ever done, I've never done that once. So just because it's on TV doesn't mean it's so. So with LaSalle, she said to me, you know what? Just start doing readings. Just practice. Meditate. It will come to you. 
So I was meditating and things were coming to me. Um, and I don't, I'm just thinking, um, hmm, I'm thinking that, uh, I'm not sure if we should take a commercial break um, here in a few minutes. It's totally up to you all if I'm talking too much. <laughs> but um, so why don't we take a quick commercial break and I will come back and I will talk to you about when I was meditating and things that came through and that'll give you all a chance to maybe grab a cup of coffee or some tea and go what's this crazy woman talking about so i'll be back in a few minutes hello and welcome back to another breakfast mojo i'm your host comedian koi and we're about to eat some breakfast so come on follow me it's already set up this is what i heard so i have no idea what's expected all i know is it's breakfast food so let's see what it is i have no idea what it is folks no idea no idea. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at this. Legends. Okay. They got the thing all set up here. It's chicken and grill. So we're going to see what the chicken is right now on the Breakfast Mojo. What do we have here? Chicken. <laughs> and what else do we have here? Okay. Waffles. Okay. Okay. So... The chicken kind of threw me off because I'm like, it's breakfast, hello, this is the breakfast mojo. Chicken and waffles. Got my syrup here. Should've been blindfolded when I was doing this breakfast, I should. But let's see what it's like here. Wow, looks good. It, it cuts easily. Got a little white powder on it. Some butter. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, let's see what it's, what it's looking like. At least you could have had the fork and the knife match each other. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Let's see what it's like here. Here we go. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Let's see what the chicken is like here. Got, you know, some of y'all are saying, why don't you just pick it up and eat the thing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, here we go. So we got the... Very basic. Nothing... Nothing fantastic. I wonder if I can do two reviews, one for the chicken and one for the waffle. I actually like the waffle. I think the waffle is very good. The waffle is very, the batter is very, what do you say? A little bit on the sugar, sugar side. The chicken on the other hand could be a lot better. I'm not really happy with the chicken as much. I don't think the, the chicken actually makes the waffle any better. I think the waffle actually complements the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So, for my review, I will say breakfast brilliant for the waffle and breakfast blah for the chicken. We'll probably do it separately. Oh, that's all the review that we have. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look, what is your favorite waffle place? Do you have a chicken and waffle spot that you normally go to that you can recommend? If you do, Write it in the comment. Let folks know, okay? Don't forget to subscribe. Breakfast Mojo. Take care. Welcome back. You are here with Stacy Needenthal at WBGR Network. Um, uh, we are doing a show about connecting the spirit with Stacy. Before the break, I was just talking about different signs and how God was showing me that I was opening up to spirit. And we talked about different things that came up with my mom and how she was actually kind of that messenger that brought me to spirit. So I was starting to talk about meditating and practicing channeling and bringing people through. And I, I would go into my shower um, and I would meditate. Shower meditation seemed like it was the easiest thing for me. A lot of people will tell me, I just can't meditate. My mind goes here, 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 and here. If you can get in touch with your breath for three deep breaths, you're meditating. But it was easiest for me to meditate when I was in the shower because I would visualize the water coming down and I had that shushing sound that would come over me and I would visualize that anything that was negative that was in my mind was just washing down the drain. 
And when I would go into the shower, I would take one of my journals with me and a pen and paper with me. And when I would be finished and I'd be walking back from the shower room, we live in a school, by the way, um, walking back from the shower room into my apartment, many times I would be right in the hallway just writing because things were coming to me. And my husband would be, you know, he'd pass me in the hallway every once in a while and he's like, spirit? <laughs> and one of the first things that came to me that I wrote it down, um, and, and a very dear friend of me had lost her husband. Um, and his face came to me when I was in the shower. And so I started talking to him, like, what do you want? What, what, why are you here? And when I got out in the hallway, like, things just started coming to me. And he showed me this black cat, and I just saw, like, this line here right, right at its face. And he showed me, like, a muscle car, and he played, you know, these music in the background and just all these different things. And he's like, Tal Tracy. Well, nobody really knew what I was doing, you know? I didn't really even know what I was doing. So I called my friend Tracy and I said, hey, I need to talk to you about something, but I'd like to do it through Facebook Messenger because I want to do it face to face. And we were back and forth a few times and finally connected with her and said, look, I hope you don't think that I'm crazy, but Dave came to me when I was in the shower and Tracy just laughed and she's like, of course he did. Of course he would come to you in the shower. And I said, I just, uh, all of a sudden, I feel like <clears throat> I'm connected with spirit. And I feel like he wants me to tell you things. And I have them written down. And I would love to share them with you. But if you're not ready, or if this is not the thing for you, I will not be offended. And Tracy was very open-minded with it and said, sure, you know, what do you have? So I told her about this cat that he showed me with, and it was almost like, like he was doing this. And she was like, oh my goodness. And she leaned down and she picked up this cat that had this white line right down its, between its eyes. This is Dave's cat. So he was validating to me that Tracy had the cat or if the cat was okay. And other things that she could just validate and she just knew. Um, and you know, I always, I'm such a proponent now and have been since I started this to journal, to write things down. Because the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain will argue with yourself. And you'll be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't really get that. Did I get that? How did, I've been in sales for 15 years. Am I just selling somebody? Am I just, what am I doing here? But then when I would go back and I would validate, oh my gosh, there was this cat with the line that Dave showed me. And there was this muscle car and she knew what this car was. These are validations. These were things that I could look back on and go, this is not BS, like I'm really doing this. And one of the times that I was walking back and forth and it was a message for my sister. And I had a picture I'd like, and I'm not an artist. Um, I can do the stick figures, but I drew this picture of this bridge. And I said to Lori, I said, I don't know what this means, but for some reason they're showing me a picture of this dream or of this bridge. And she kind of laughed and we're talking on the phone. She goes, I need to send you something. And she sent me a picture of a bridge that she had just taken. She was out of town for business. And the bridges looked alike. There was another validation. So I knew that things were starting and I just needed to start practicing. And that's what I did. I started practicing with just one person face to face. And I did that for a little while. And then all of a sudden that one person would say, you know, I'd really like to bring my mom with me. And I would ponder it. That's a Sioux word. She taught me to ponder. And I would ponder it and I would say, yeah, I could probably do two. Um, well, I want to bring my daughter along too. All right, I could probably do three. And I felt the universe pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. And I did group readings of five people for a long time. And I've gotten to the point where now I'm doing 10 to 12 people in a group reading and they are very intimate readings and not that any other medium is wrong in saying this. I don't call them parties. To me, it's not a party. To me, it's a healing. I am a spiritual healer. And when I keep the group readings small, I can bring through spirit for each and every person 
most of the time. <clears throat> Sometimes angels have a message for you. Sometimes if you come to this reading and it's just out of curiosity or you're closed, the angels have a bigger message for you. So I will connect with angels and give you that message. And when I first started, when I channel, I'll open up to spirit and I have an intention that I set. But when I'm finished channeling, I don't remember anything. It all, it like, it, it, it goes away. And certain things may stick out to me. Um, there was this one woman, and this was a while ago. I'm, I'm bringing her mom through, and her mom kept, like, tapping at my teeth. And I remember saying to this woman, you know, this is really odd. She keeps, like, tapping at my teeth. I don't know why she's tapping my teeth. And when I looked over at the woman, because generally when I'm, when I'm channeling for you, I'm looking over to the right because spirit comes through to my right, and I want to connect with them. She kind of looked mortified, but she was laughing, and she goes, oh, my God, my mom knows. And I said, what do you mean your mom knows? And she said, when my mom passed, she had these dentures in a drawer, and they had gold fillings in them. How do you throw away gold fillings, but how do you sell your mom's teeth? So she said, so I, I went and I spoke to someone, you know, is there any value in these? And she said, come to find out there was value in these gold teeth. She said, I sold my mom's dentures. And I, and I feel guilty about it. I said, mom's just laughing, letting you know that it's okay. Um, I had a young man who was killed in a car accident and I brought, I, I did a, a group reading for several of his family members and oh my gosh, they've got this Brandon Tolson Foundation that if you haven't looked this up and, and contributed or been a part of it, definitely look that up. But Brandon was so strong when he came through and as I'm channeling, he kept saying, I want to talk to Sweets. So I would say that and I'm looking around at everybody and nobody knew what this meant. And when I brought the message through for his grandmother, his grandmother looked at his at Brandon's mom and said, Candy, can you hand me a napkin? Because she was crying. And I looked at Candy and I'm like, you're Candy? He wants to talk to sweets. He wants to talk to you. Because you see, when spirit comes through to me, it's almost like different signs, different things that they will say to me that will mean something to you that may not mean anything to me. So the message he was trying to bring through was for sweets, it was for candy, it was for his mom. So I was able to like bring that through to her and give her that message. And Brandon was so strong, he's probably one of the only ones that I can think of that when he came through at one point, I literally had to get up from the room, walk into the bathroom, breathe for a minute and do you know this man followed me into the bathroom and I remember saying to him you need to give me a minute like you're too strong and he wasn't finished so when I came back out we finished the reading so things like this stick with me but I don't necessarily remember every single detail of your reading so if I do a reading for you and you see me later and say remember in my reading that you said Believe me, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't remember. And I'm sorry about that, but I feel like they take it away from me because if you come in for another reading, you don't want to hear the exact same thing that you heard before. So, um, hmm, you know, I feel like I need to stress um, and talk about grief just, just for a brief moment. Um, I was so concerned that I wasn't going to have enough to talk about, but I'm doing good, I think. So with grief... I just want you to just understand that there's no book on how to grieve. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. We all grieve differently. We feel a loss of that person. Some people grieve one or two days, some people grieve four or five years, some people grieve forever. The first year after my mom passed, it's very difficult. Second year, a little easier. Third year, a little easier. Fourth year, hmm. Fifth year, whoo, boy, I tanked. I had a really difficult time, but I got through it. And when people tell you, oh, it gets easier with time, no, it doesn't. You learn a new difference. You learn a new normal. You learn to deal with not having that person physically with you. And waves will come in where you'll be okay, and then all of a sudden you hear a song or a scent, and, 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 and you're back into the grief. It's okay. Feel through that grief. They want to remind you that they're around, but they, they don't want you to grieve their loss. 
they want you to celebrate their presence and what they had within you. And when I was going through the grief of my mother, the best way that I can describe it, it was like I was homesick for her. You know, when you're little and you go to camp or you go to a friend's house for the first time, you're homesick. You know, you have to walk through that homesickness. One time or another through our lives, you're going to lose someone important to you. But we have to remember what they taught you. You have to remember that they're not lost. They're still within you. They're woven in every single piece of you. Their memory, the things they taught you, the things they said, the pictures that you have, the things that they gave you, all of those memories, those are in celebration of what that person gave to you, not what the person is not going to give to you in the future. That is our own, for lack of a better word, selfish set, self saying, I want them here with me. You're telling me they're in a better place? Well, then they should be with me because that's where I want to be is with this person. But know that they are with you. Something my mom taught me after she passed, I kept waking up at night at 2.11 and that's the time my mom died. And I wasn't angry that she was waking me up at this time, but I thought, why in the world would you wake me up at the moment that I lost you? And through years of doing meditations, years of doing readings, talking to spirit, talking to God, talking to angels, it occurred to me that my mom was celebrating her first step, her first moment into glory when she went into a different realm because the imprint that she had on me, her blueprint that she left on this earth is still here in family, in friends, in Christmas decorations for goodness sakes, in napkins. My mom would buy Thanksgiving napkins and Christmas napkins every year for our big family get together that I always did. And I used to think to myself, oh my God, mom, I can buy napkins. But that she just she had to buy napkins. And do you know, after she passed away, my sister and I were in a little shop. Now it's June and we walk into the shop and they have this clearance counter. And there were Thanksgiving, there was napkins, it kind of chokes me up right now, isn't that awful? I can't cry on air, there's no crying on air. It's 11, 11 too, God bless you mom. There were these Thanksgiving napkins with a turkey on it and I started to tear up and Lori, my sister was like, it's the napkins. I'm like, yeah, I had to buy them. I had to buy them. Those are the traditions that keeps my mom still with me. Is her body still here with me? No. But her essence is, her love is, the things that she taught me, her You Are My Sunshine campaign that I still see everywhere. She didn't, she didn't leave me. Her physical body left this world, but she went on to a new chapter. It's almost like she went off to college when the kids leave and they go to college. So I, you can continue the relationship with that person who has left because they're still constantly around you. You know, their spiritual body has, or their, their, their physical body has left, but their spiritual essence is still around you. And they will show you signs. Ask. And they will show you signs. My husband will say to me, well, we're not getting out of here alive. And that's the truth. Everybody is going to face death. And every day we live is one, close, one step closer to our celebration of death to our moving on to the next realm. So while we're on this earth, why would we not love as deeply as we can, touch as many people as we can, teach people things, tell stories, have photographs, so that when your physical body is no longer on this earth, there are things that are gonna remind other people of you. So, you know, take the pictures, look at the pictures, talk to your loved ones. They're still right here with you. And that will also help you to walk through the grief. If you push the grief down, eventually it's going to bubble up and it's just going to hit you hard. So walk through it. If someone else doesn't understand it, you know what? Who cares? It's none of their it's none of your business what they think about what you're going through. Your body knows what it needs to do. If you need to grieve, you grieve. So trying to think here um so when i started doing the readings kind of got 
off the path there um, where I was doing one and two and three readings. So if you have lost a loved one and you want those validations, connect with a medium. You can connect with me. And this is not um, just a big advertisement of, oh, pick me, pick me, pick me, I'm your medium for you. There are mediums that you may not feel comfortable with, and that's okay. And yes, there are scam artists out there. Unfortunately, there are, but it's in every business. There are people in construction that are shoddy contractors. There are bad painters. There are bad musicians. There are bad doctors. What you need to do is differentiate how you feel towards that person, paying attention to your body. And spiritualism isn't for everybody. And I'm, I'm totally cool with that. When I first started um, opening up to spirit, and people would talk about their mom that had passed or some type of um, death. I remember kind of looking around and whispering, I can probably help you. And they were like, what? I, I talked to spirit. Now it's just like, I can help you. If you feel comfortable in my presence, if you don't, there's another medium out there. There's another psychic out there or a spiritualist, or maybe you don't want to connect with spirit at all. You're not ready, and that's fine. I'm not pushing you to see a medium. I'm just telling you that there are, there is life after life. And I just want you to know that your loved one hasn't left you. They're still there. They are a whisper away. And think about that. When you were little and you would pray, you would whisper. It would be a soft voice. So whisper to your loved one. They want to connect with you, and they're going to start showing you signs. And trust me that sometimes those signs will be at the best moments, and sometimes you'll feel like they're at the worst moments. But they're letting you know that they're there. And we'll talk about signs in other shows. Um, we'll talk about meditating. We'll talk about what happens after you die. I even want to talk about scripture that talks about fruits of the spirit and how sometimes scripture can get to be that place that you kind of hide behind so that you're not talking to a medium um, and I'm you know I am a child of God in, in in every form of the way when I say things um, when I start my reading I always say my name is Stacy and I'm a child of God and I am a spiritual healer and I'm a shaman and I've been given a gift from God to channel spirit using love and light I only deal in love and light I don't deal with the bad guys there are bad spirit out there but I operate in such a high light that that's not going to come through and I have asked God I have asked spirit I have asked angels not to put someone in my path that I cannot help so I know if someone comes to me, I can help them. If I can help them, I kind of like feel like they're pushing me back and I will suggest someone else to them. So dealing in love and light, I know that God is putting me on this path. Um, and, and I'm not gonna be that medium that says to you that I see death all around you and you're gonna be dead in 10 days. My gift, my prayer, is that God, that spirit, that angels will give you the most healing message that you need that's going to help heal your spirit. Because most people who come to see me are either at a crossroads and they're looking for directions from their angels and their guides, or they want to connect with their loved ones. So I pray before I come out that the most loving message comes to you and God brings that for your spiritual healing spirit brings that so again my name is Stacy Needenthal and I'm part of connecting to spirit with Stacy I have a Facebook page I have a group I do readings and spiritual healings if you ever have a question about spirituality or about connecting feel free to reach out to me um, I can't always get right back to you but I promise you'll hear something from me message me join my Facebook group um, once I figure out how to like live stream or or look at 
my phone while I'm here. So if you have questions, we'll take questions. There's a, a phone that I can take phone in questions. And if you have suggestions about what you would like me to talk about, please comment in the, the comments below. Let me know. Um, I, I love talking about this. This is my passion. I truly know that this is what God has been preparing me for for a very long time. I often thought when I was younger that my gift was to help women in domestic violence situations. And although I was able to do that, it was um, more anxiety on me, like I knew where they needed to go and how to help them, but then I took that on. When I opened up, guess what? No more panic attacks. No more throat swelling. No more um, ticking clocks that bother me. That's all gone. These are all signs to me that I'm exactly where I need to be. And helping others connect to their loved ones while you're mourning um, a death of a child. I can't even imagine a death of a child. My mom was my mom for 50 years. Like, all of a sudden she's not. Like, how do you, how do you work, walk through that? So with the gift that I have, with the spirit that's around me, I am able to open up that small space for you that allows you to breathe and know that they haven't left you. They're around you. They're just a whisper away. So whisper to them. So in closing, um, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to Connecting the Spirit with Stacy on WBGR. Um, again, I will be back Tuesday at 10.30. I'll be here every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11.30. I will take calls if you want to call in and ask me questions, but we'll be talking about all different types of things and mediumship and past life regressions and what is that and soul retrieval and what is that. So on that spiritual realm, on that healing realm, on that shaman realm, those are the things that I want to talk about to you because I feel like this needs to be an education. Um, get rid of the misconception or the stereotypes of who a medium is or what a medium does. So I pray that you all are living the life you love, you are loving the life you live. If not, you are the only one that can change it. Every day, you get closer and closer and closer to entering into glory. So why not live the life you love? Whisper to your loved one. Be in prayer. Embrace that they have now gone on to a greater realm. And know by no means at all is your loved one lost. They're just not right here. But they're here. I will see you next Tuesday at 1030. I appreciate you all for tuning in to my first show, um, bearing with me a little bit. And um, peace out. And I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.